Thank you, Mr. Angus. Mr. Rota. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you, Mr. Minister, for being here today. Um, over the course of uh, your decision making, uh, obviously you asked for advice. You say you consulted with Statistics Canada. Uh, the former head of Statistics Canada pointed out that you have the authority to release the written advice that was provided to you. Will you provide this committee with that advice? Well, I may have the authority, but the fact of the matter is, if it's advice to Cabinet, uh, as you know, Mr. Rhoda, um, there would be some issues of uh, the oath that I've taken. Uh, and so, uh, it's about the information that was challenge. provided to you. Will you provide us with it? I think I can tell you again, sir. Yes or no? Simple. I, I'm trying to answer your question. Uh, sometimes questions may sound simple, but the answers uh, deserve to have some uh, some detail attached to them. And the fact of the matter is, I've said before this committee already, I've said before the public previous to this committee, that it was, it was we who made this decision. We take full accountability and responsibility for making this decision. And then we have worked with StatsCan over the last several months to come up with options to I'll take that as a no and I'll just move on to my next question then, if you don't mind. Um, I've got some concerns, and if I can follow up on what Mr. Angus uh, was talking about, about uh, the crises uh, that have been created. Uh, recently, you introduced C-14, which all in all wasn't bad legislation, fairness at the pumps, but it's the title that came with it. It was the Chislers or the Anti-Chislers Act, I mean, to, to give the impression that everybody's out to get us, when in reality a very small number of people uh, actually, uh, actually are, are cheating at the pump. There may be problems with some of the measurements, but it's a small percentage. But it made it sound like we're under attack. There's a crisis there. Um, now, all of a sudden, it sounds like the government's going to come to your door and throw you in jail. I mean, there's this crisis that if you don't fill out this form, you're going to jail. Now, it has flashbacks. Now, in 95, I was a city councillor uh, in North Bay, and uh, not long after, you were uh, a minister in a previous government. And I've seen this show before. It's a replay of you create a crisis, get everyone upset, and all of a sudden you've got a crowd of mad people out in the streets chasing something down that really doesn't exist. This is about being jailed. It's about the penalty. How many people have been jailed since 1971? Uh, of course, I disagree with your characterization. Uh, our motive is... Uh, and no, no, the question the... is how many have been jailed since 1971? That's a simple question. Our motive is... No, uh, no, no, the to... question is how many have been jailed? How many? Okay, let the, let the minister finish his, uh, his sentence, and if he doesn't provide right, an answer, the difference, he doesn't the have difference between you and I is I don't, you're I didn't ask what the difference willing, between you and I were, Mr. Minister. I asked how many people to have been jailed since 1971. If a let, let him finish his sentence. Uh, objects to filling out a 40-page census form, you are willing to threaten them with jail. You are willing to threaten them with fines and or jail, and we are not willing to do so. That's the okay. fundamental difference. Thank you, Minister. Yes. Mr. Uh, Mr. Rota, go ahead. Yeah. Yes. Have you considered getting, taking the penalty away or changing the penalty? That would seem to be the logical way of looking at it, because sure. that seems to be an option. Yeah, I, certainly we've, we have considered that. Uh, the, the issue, though, is if you, have a, uh, if, if you have a situation where something is mandatory but there's no sanction, it's a pretty much of an empty threat. We would prefer to work with Canadians to voluntarily fill out the long form, uh, to get the robust information, uh, reliable data that uh, some people require for their businesses or for their institutions. That's we right. think that that's a better way to go. Now, on the short term, on the short form census and the agricultural census, what is the penalty? Well. The, well, the short form census is the same penalty as before. The so you're willing to throw deputy, people in jail for not filling up a short census, form census. You're willing to throw people in jail for not filling in a short form census, but not a long form census. I, I just don't see the logic here, uh, Mr. Yeah. Minister. It just well, and, and the agricultural farmers you're willing to throw in jail, but not the people who won't throw uh, won't fill in the long form census. It just I fail to see the logic and the connection. Sure. You're 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 getting rid of something that's useful when you really should be looking at the penalty, which is... Yeah, I, I, I know you and I disagree, but for the agricultural census, obviously, I rely on the advice of the Minister of Agriculture. For the, for the short-form census, as we've said, uh, you have eight questions, or thereabouts, uh, on, a, on a form. Basic information is asked, and uh, we do require that every Canadian uh, household that uh, receives that, uh, that of, course, of course, do receive that, they fill that out. Uh, but when you, uh, our problem is not only with the 
the threat of jail time. It's the intrusiveness of the questions. And I think I've made that pretty clear here. Okay. So thank you, Minister. Thank you, Mr. Rose.